Konnichiwa. In the previous video, we fixed the manual clock switch problem. This one shot allows the register to automatically update. In this video, we want to address one other issue that makes our vending machine controller less realistic. The inability to remember change. Our design here will be an exploration of the power of circuit devices. We will ultimately add to our current model just two devices that we have already made in the course. Devices allow for modularity and relative simplicity compared with designing at the gate level. If you remember back to our Model A video, one of the specs was, no change will be given if extra money is inserted. Let's adjust that. Now we want our circuit to store any excess money deposited after the product is vended. For example, let's say the price of the soda is 40 cents. A user inserts two quarters or 50 cents total. They press the product select button and two things happen. The soda is vended, and the register drops down to 10 cents. Why 10 cents? Because that is the difference between the price and the current money total. Consider this question carefully. What two operations need to be performed to accomplish this? Pause the video while you contemplate. The first operation is a little more obvious. Subtraction. I said on the previous slide that change is the difference between the price and the current money total. That keyword difference points us straight to the math operation of subtraction. Register value minus price equals the change. Good news! We have already built a device that can perform 4-bit subtraction. The add subtract 4 device from several weeks ago. The second operation is a little less obvious but it is an operation you will see repeatedly in logic circuits. Data selection. There is just one register that holds the money deposited in the machine, but there are two possible data streams feeding into the register. The first register input is the previous register value added to the current coin inputs. This is what we have seen already in our design and will be the input used most often. The second possible register input is the change value, which is the output from the subtractor just described. This input will only be selected in the special case when a product is selected. When you hear data selection, you should immediately think of a multiplexer. We will use the 4-bit MUX device already built in this course. This schematic shows the two new devices, labeled with their appropriate inputs. The add subtract 4 device is always in subtract mode thanks to this plus 5 volt signal here. Since we designed it to perform B minus A, the register value should pass into the B ports and the price value to the A ports. This difference, also known as the change, serves as one input to the MUX. The other input needs to be the current register value. One of those inputs will be selected and the result fed back around to the register. Note something important about our design reasoning. We started with the goal, be able to compute and remember change. Then we identified operations to be done. Then we identified devices that can accomplish those operations. It is so tempting to reverse this and begin by looking at available devices and forcing a goal to fit into those devices. Sometimes you might get lucky trying that, but not often. Identify the tools only after you know what the goal is. This new setup is missing just one input signal, A slash B prime on the MUX. How do we decide which of these two possibilities is selected to circle back to the register? Think about the operation of the vending machine. There is only one special case when we should store the change. That case is when a product is vended. In all other cases, we don't care about the change. Instead, we want the current register value to feed back to determine the next register value. So, the A slash B prime input 
can be a signal that we already compute through the AND gate, telling us that vend available and product select are both active. Here we have the new devices added to the old model correctly, almost. We'll get to the mistakes in a bit. But for now, reflect on how easy it was to update our circuit by slapping in two new devices. Abstracting gate level circuits into device symbols opens the door for quick and powerful design changes. Up here, we see the register and price values input into the subtractor. We also see the register feed into the MUX. And we see the select bit of the MUX determined by this VEN signal. That VEN signal is simply the output of this AND gate, which says that VEN is available and the user has selected a product. I didn't draw the wire, just for visual clarity. Also note that the MUX output loops around to the adder input. We could reorganize this so the adder and the subtractor both feed into the MUX, which then goes to the register, but I think this approach is simpler. In normal operation, the register value is added to new coin inputs, just like before. In the special case of vending a product, the change value does pass through the adder, which seems strange. But the coin inputs are all off at this point, so zero is being added to the change. Now for the minor mistakes still remaining. There are three of them here. I want you to pause the video for a while and study this circuit closely. See if you can find all three. The first is that I swapped the register and price inputs to the subtractor. It is so easy to make little mistakes like this in digital design, so pay careful attention each step of the way. The next mistake is that this VEN signal should not clear the register like it did before. We want the VEN signal to tell the MUX to accept the change value, which is then stored in the register. If we also simultaneously force clear the register, we lose that change we work so hard to compute. The third mistake is related to this. Vending a product by pressing product select needs to tell the register to update by sending a positive edge to the clock port. So this OR gate should be expanded to include product select so that it too can trigger the one shot. After applying those changes and doing some minor reorganization for visual clarity, here is the final circuit. Note that this PS wire does also swing around as an input to this AND gate. As a quick demo, I'll clear the register by pressing coin return. Then I'll add a quarter. Five is now stored in the register. Then I'll add one dime. Seven is now in the register. Then I'll add one more dime. Nine is in the register or 45 cents, which is one more than the price. Vend available is now active for the first time. I then choose my soda, and the change of one is computed and routed back into the register. It works. Rather than wasting those five cents of extra money, the machine remembers what change should be stored. And at this point, we can continue paying for the next soda. We have come quite a long ways from the initial problem statement to this vending machine controller but it really did not take very long to do so. By starting with the goals and then identifying specific operations that build up to our goals, we were able to find prepackaged devices to complete those operations. At its core, digital design is zeros and ones and logic gates, but it very quickly and mercifully abstracts into larger and larger devices. To use them effectively, we must understand what the inputs and outputs mean.